Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the four hour chart of gold provided by netdenia.com. You can click on the link below. I've drawn in three trend lines here. The rising trend line from mid-May, uh, falling trend line from late March, and then uh, another falling trend line from early March. Now you can see that they intersect here and then this top one was breached this morning and the second one was barely breached a little bit later and you can see we backed off from that. So is gold entering a rally phase? Uh, maybe again we could sell off from here and turn back down uh, to bring up the MACD. You can see it's starting to push into some overbought territory so it could do one of these uh, then again, it could break out and uh, go up. We're looking for that breakout that breaks us out of a lot of the very large pennant formations, some smaller pennant formations, and of course this formation. So we're keeping an eye on gold. If you remember, I pointed out that gold had uh, broken away from the euro. The euro stopped falling at that point and started rallying today. Now I want to go over to the question of the night and this is from Travis, uh, your awakening and family advice. Could you tell us how you got into precious metals? What caused you to wake up? Was this an awakening on your part or did someone you know lead you to learning more about the metals? Part of the reason I asked this is because I've tried to share with family about what is going on in the system and how they can protect themselves. My father in particular is not interested and tells me that the Hunt brothers went broke playing the silver market. Uh, he gets the fact that the world is corrupt but he figures it will all work itself out even when I think I give good reasoning or share a video he barely takes notice he's pretty intelligent has a wealth of experience debt free and earns great money in a good industry any advice thanks again love your work now the first question uh, about me personally well I was a coin collector since I was a small child because uh, I had adults who got me into that and my parents of course I mentioned before collected silver during the 60s when it was demonetized so I got to see um, coins being pulled out of circulation at face value and then being saved and appreciate above that so there's really no point in time that I kind of got it I kind of always grew up with it and then, uh, of course, watched the bubble of the 1970s and then the crash. And it wasn't until the late 90s I started to investigate the silver manipulation, gold manipulation stories by reading Gatta and Ted Butler and people like that. Now, speaking of the 70s manipulation, he talks about the, uh, or I'm sorry, the 70s bubble. He talks about the Hunt brothers went broke playing the silver market well the hunt brothers went broke playing the paper silver market uh, it was the fact that the hunt brothers started buying paper futures and uh, broke away from stacking physical silver which is what their initial play was and uh, that's how they got bankrupted because they changed the rules on them and they also leaned on them and wouldn't let them borrow money. I mean, there was a million things they did to destroy the hunts. Uh, but the, And then you have to remember that there was a very large surplus of silver at that time. So if they wanted to, they could have sold it down anyway uh, by dumping the physical. The hunts would have had to take delivery and sit on probably billions and billions of ounces of silver to corner that market. So... And I don't think they were trying to corner the market. You have to remember when the hunt started, it was illegal to own gold. So and the natural uh, play would be to buy silver. Uh, that was when they first started. So, and then the other uh, point in this is uh, how do you get somebody to wake up? Well, I, I really can't answer that. And we're going to see that when we look at the, uh, the um, pump and dump schemes that run on Wall Street that uh, if, it, if it works out for somebody it's very difficult to educate them as to why it's a scam especially if they've profited off of it and uh, it just it 
it's one of those things that it takes an event that uh, just wipes everybody out, uh, such as the crash of the Nikkei in the Jap uh, Japanese stock market. The Japanese have been soured on stocks and uh, just refused to buy them because so many of them got burned. So it takes that type of an event and with the US stock market we've had bubbles and crashes but then they've always recovered and as that crash the real estate market recovered that and then stocks took off again and then we had the 2008 crash and then the Fed pumped up a bunch of money and and stocks took off and doubled from the 2009 March low doubled from there so it takes people to learn a lesson they have to learn a personal lesson and uh, that's what it's going to take for them to wake up so I'm afraid that a lot of the people who think they're doing great in the paper uh, system, when the paper burns, they're going to find out that they really didn't have anything. And that's just going to be, unfortunately, one of those lessons they have to learn in person. And then again, it may be too late after they learn that. So I wanted to go over and examine this pump and dump theme here because uh, I've been following uh, some of the news that's occurred uh, regarding the... Uh, bad earnings report with Apple and then there's the uh, Chipotle that did right before that before we go over there though I wanted to um, jump to the latest Jim Willie which just came out this afternoon and uh, I just wanted to cover this one section here because he's saying something similar that I said last night and the night before about this LIBOR thing and uh, he says uh, interest rate swap and false UST bond safe haven. The next jump in the banker brush fire might be the revelation of the primary role played by interest rate swap derivative contract device. The JP Morgan chief investment office is tasked with fabricating US Treasury bond rally. They must maintain the near 0% bond climate despite chronic 1.5 trillion dollar deficits to securitize and largely absent foreign creditors. They farm out the duty to their Morgan Stanley outpost. Hundreds of billions of dollars in artificial U.S. T-bond demand can be produced with trumpets blown by the strumpets calling the flight to safety in U.S. To uh, T -bond, toxic U.S. T-bonds. Recall that the cost of funding the IRS swap mechanical abuse is the ultra-cheap LIBOR rate. Notice the tight correlation between the U.S. Fed Fund's official rate and LIBOR rate. The price rigging in the LIBOR came about since banks refused to lend at the absurd 0% rate dictated by the U.S. Fed, working in close concert with the Bank of England. The banks were willing to speculate at that rate, but not to lend at that rate. The target could not be sustained, so the participants to the consensus procedure lied to each other, complete with memos adorned with by winks the practicality of the ZERP could not extend into the real world without further collusion so you can see this chart that he has this is the LIBOR rate overlaid with the Fed's Fed funds rate now there's just simply no arguing the fact that LIBOR directly follows the Fed funds rate which makes sense because if someone's willing to lend cheaper then that's gonna force the rates down but you can also see this tremendous spike right in the fall of 2008 in the midst of this financial crisis when things started to lock up and you can see the Fed continued to lower and then LIBOR quickly reversed and followed the Fed funds rate so this makes it clear that uh, as I was saying it's not bankers colluding with each other that's behind this zero interest rate policy it is the Federal Reserve and it is the Bank of England. Now what's so interesting about this is that the big scandal is about the manipulation of interest rates. That's why there's a scandal. That someone would manipulate interest rates uh, to profit from it. Well what does the Federal Reserve do but manipulate interest rates? So I think it's a little bit bizarre that we would be shocked and incensed that bankers would manipulate interest rates yet we are not shocked at all that the Federal uh, Federal Reserve their whole job is to manipulate interest rates and you can see now they've pegged them basically at zero and they're in the process of destroying the economy and as Jim Willie points out the reason they have to do this is to fund these chronic 1.5 trillion dollar deficits where no one wants 
their worthless toxic T-bonds anymore and uh, so they have to buy them themselves and it's all just a gigantic price rigging operation and uh, it's run by the Federal Reserve. So let's jump over to the charts of uh, there's a couple that I picked out before I go to that let's go to a big chart summary and uh, that is a overlay of multiple charts that I've done here. I picked two of the early dogs uh, that uh, crashed already and those are Netflix and Green Mountain Coffee Roasters and then I've also put in Apple and Priceline. Now a couple things that stand out first of all you can see the top blue is Priceline the next one is um, I'm sorry the top is Apple and the next one is Priceline and then down here the uh, main candlestick chart is uh, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters and Netflix. So you can see in the one-year chart both uh, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters and Netflix are down 80 percent and uh, they pretty much follow each other very tightly. The other thing to notice is how tight the correlation is with Apple and Priceline. Now the reason why I chose those two I've called tops in both of those and, and I think they're gonna crash just like these other two did but uh, what is fascinating is the tight correlation here that we see in the prices of these two stocks. Now, the, and they really couldn't be, in my mind, too much farther from each other because Apple is a real producer of real things, and uh, Priceline is just, in my mind, just kind of a, a scam company that uh, has run a scam once and probably is going to blow up again. But it's you know a website where you go and uh, make reservations and there's a million others like that so in my mind it's tremendously overvalued and uh, just uh, more like not a real company compared to Apple but you can see regardless of that that the pump and dump monies are flowing into those stocks in a similar rate now let's go over to a chart here a net Dania of Netflix and what I've done here is I've drawn a trend line back to the beginning of when this kind of started uh, and that's uh, you get a price of about 20 bucks and then uh, it brought it forward to where we are so you can see that's kind of a normal rising slope in this stock the big outlier here is this gigantic bubble that occurred between 2010 and 2012 where the stock ran from $60 to $300 and back down to $60. And the question is why? Why didn't the stock just generally appreciate right like that and just continue uh, to rise uh, as a normal growth? And if you do the calculation on this, I've done the calculation on both of these, it comes to anywhere from 13-15% growth a year and if you just exclude this you just go from this price to this price so the question is why do we have this huge bubble the answer is going to be that it's a pump and dump by Wall Street it's the way that Wall Street fleeces investors and uh, takes transfers money from Main Street over to Wall Street in other words transfers money from your retirement account or your 401k into the pockets of insiders and we're going to show that first let's look at the Green Mountain Coffee Roasters because that's the one we're going to be looking at the insider transactions on. So you can see with Green Mountain Coffee Roasters you have the same sort of thing that you had with Netflix. You have a strong rise over time here, fairly steady, uh, a rise from about roughly, where are we here, about $10 or $5. So we got about $5 a share and now we're at about $17, so about a triple uh, from 2001 same thing comes to about maybe 10 13 percent growth per year that's a decent return uh, now the other thing you need to keep in mind is that uh, you have a capital gains tax rate that you have to pay and uh, so and these stocks most of them don't pay any dividends so you're talking about uh, not that great of a gain a decent gain but not that great of a gain so if you're lucky and you pick the greatest one out there which these seem to be until they crash uh, you 
pick up 10% per year. Silver and gold have returned far more than that uh, over the last 10 years, 12 years. But uh, So again, we have this huge pump and dump uh, situation here where apparently the stock was worth 10 bucks uh, around 2009 and then all of a sudden it's back worth about 17 bucks but it ran all the way to 115 dollars so again why so let's take a look at uh, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters because that's the one that we have uh, pulled up the insider transactions the first thing you want to note uh, in the key statistics is this is less than uh, less than a three billion dollar company it's uh, roughly 2.78 billion dollar market cap now and uh, we want to look over at the insider transactions now this goes back to this is required SEC reporting it goes back to August 2010 my guess is that there probably are a lot more transactions but because the price was so low for our purposes uh, it's not that important now you can see some of these insider transactions here's a 53 million dollar sale so someone made 53 million dollars here's 32 million dollar sale and uh, here's a 10 million dollar sale here's a 32 million dollar sale a 33 million dollar sale there's a hundred and twenty three million dollar sale of this stock now as I said you've got about a three point or 2.78 billion dollar market cap on this company and when you add all those I added them together they come to about 400 million dollars so this transfer of wealth amounts to 15 to 20 percent uh, if there's more that score scroll off that chart that we haven't seen we're talking about 15 to 20 percent of the current value of the company was transferred to insiders through these stock options and stock option sales that they do. Now, who does that money come from? Well, this may have changed, but if we go to the major holders, you can see in the top institutional holders, we've got uh, Capital Research, Wellington Management, Ameriprise, Lone Pine, Vanguard, State Street, BlackRock, Fidelity, BlackRock, then down here under mutual funds, you've got Fidelity, Growth Fund of America, Fidelity, 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 Vanguard, PowerShares, there's a QQQ, uh, another Vanguard. And uh, so these, a large percentage are the mutual funds investment funds that the general public is invested in. Fidelity with 23 million shares here. And so these are the people that are buying these shares from the insiders and basically transferring in this case 400 million dollars worth of money was transferred pretty much from the general public to the pockets of these insiders you can see that uh, this bubble didn't last long it really only lasted two years and uh, it enabled the insiders well that's um, Netflix but it's the same story there this is uh, Green Mountain this enabled the insiders to sell you saw that one sale was 105 so they ran the price of this stock up basically with their buddies who run these mutual funds and run these hedge funds and run these funds uh, where they can run the price up and unload the insiders unload their shares on the general public and of course then the price drops so it's a gigantic pump and dump scheme that's how Wall Street works currently it's not how it's always worked but for a very long time it's worked that way as I have said before the markets are about the transfer of wealth from Main Street to Wall Street now the latest casualty that we have I want to look at these real quick we had uh, the Chipotle Mexican Grill, which uh, just recently took the big hit. And you can see if we go to the daily, uh, they came out with earnings that the explanation is that they had earnings growth that didn't keep up. But, uh, of course, the books are cooked until they decide to let them uh, drop. That's how they always manage to beat 
by a penny or whatever they beat until the insiders have unloaded their shares or begun to unload their shares of course then they just let the bottom fall out so this is the next one this is the next Netflix that's going to happen the next Green Mountain Coffee Roasters then we've got uh, Priceline which I called a top in a while back and I've taken some heat for that you can see we had a sympathetic move uh, down with Apple and I pointed out on the big charts how those two seem to be moving together and of course we had the bad earnings with Apple and uh, we got that big drop there's a gap down could it rally from here yes it could but ultimately it's going to be another pump and dump scheme just like all the rest of them uh, and they decide when to end it they decide when to unload the shares on the public then they just pull the plug and uh, it uh, they play the game again so you can see if we go to Green Mountain Coffee Roasters because we want to look at some of the fundamentals of Green Mountain Coffee Roasters and uh, people say well uh, this company has such good prospects and etc and uh, uh, it's undervalued but if you look at what the fundamentals are now you can see that the forward PE ratio is 5.87 anybody who studies PEs knows that's very low the trailing PE is 8.6 we've got a price to sales of 0.79 this company brings in 3.47 billion dollars in revenues and uh, that's actually higher than its market cap so now the company appears to be very undervalued but that just goes to show you that uh, the pump the value of the company has nothing to do with the pump and dump scheme it can be a good company it can be a company that has a bright future but that's not what the pump and dump is about the pump and dump is about getting the stock price high enough that the insiders can dump it on the public and then uh, get out and make millions in this case hundreds of millions of dollars and uh, in the case of uh, Apple it's probably even going to be billions of dollars uh, I haven't looked at the insider transactions my guess is also with Priceline it's probably going to be billions of dollars the insiders are basically going to transfer from themselves uh, from the general public to themselves so that's again how Wall Street works silver on the other hand is quite the opposite you can see that over the same time frame we've been looking at these things these stocks uh, starting from about say 2002 2003 we've run a price of five up to 50 about a tenfold move and we do appear to be bottoming out here if this were a pump and dump then of course it would come all the way back down to down around to seven or so or five and then it would just stay there forever and just drift sideways but silver isn't like that silver is not pumped up to unload on somebody silver uh, it's actually pumped down to discourage people from investing in it and uh, because it has inherent value and it's very undervalued so it's the exact opposite of Wall Street pump and dump schemes it's uh, something that is very undervalued and you want to buy as much as you can and we'll talk to you next time